there was plenty of big news here at home today, including about our economy, our strong economy. We got a blockbuster jobs report. More than 350,000 jobs were added in January. That was nearly double what analysts expected. And the unemployment rate held steady at 3.7%. This is just the latest positive sign for the economy as Americans are finally starting to feel better about all of it. Just listen to Fed Chair Jay Powell earlier this week in a rare statement. This is a good situation. Let's be honest. This is a, this is a good economy. Not something you hear from him often. Joining me now, my dear friend, Ron Insana, CNBC senior analyst. Ron, for months, yes. people were debating, will it be a hard landing? Will it be a soft landing? It seems it will be no landing. That this is, is great news. I'm very good news across the board. What is your assessment? Unambiguously good news. And not only do we get a strong employment report, the unemployment rate now has been below 4% for 24 straight months. That is the longest stretch since the mid-1960s. Wages are growing faster than inflation. The Atlanta Federal Reserve puts out a real-time estimate of growth for the U.S. economy in the first quarter, the quarter that we're in right now. It's expected the economy could grow as much as 4%, which is actually faster than we were at the end of last year. So no landing is, is the correct assessment at this point in time. Even right wing media sort of finally yeah, acquiesced yeah. throughout the day. You know, they, normally they would say like, but this, but that finally said, you know what? The truth is the truth. The numbers are good. So you're hearing that, you know, so we often hear, well, people are told the economy isn't strong. That's now changing. There is so much good data that people can't say, well, it's not so good. Do you think people will start to feel it more. Well, we're seeing it in the consumer sentiment and the consumer confidence Which data. Is up. We're not seeing it in the polling because actually people are responding to the economy based on the party to which they belong. So if you're a Republican, you think the economy is not doing so well, at least according to the polls. If you're a Democrat, you think that it's doing better. Um, I do think people are feeling it. Uh, Stephanie, stock market, new all-time high for the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Americans have over $6 trillion in cash in money market mutual funds. That goes to $8 trillion if you count certificates. We don't know deposits. what that means. They have a lot of cash on hand, so consumer spending can remain strong for some time to come, which means the economy is not likely to slow down anytime soon. So this is a, a, a not just a good economy. This is about as good as it gets. You know, back in the 1990s when wages grew faster than inflation, that was a really good environment, new all-time highs in the stock market. It's effectively what we're seeing. The one wrinkle is the fact that prices overall in a post-pandemic world are higher than they were before the pandemic. But employment's better. Inflation has slowed considerably. Wages are up. It's good news all around. Not a wrinkle, but a risk. Let's yeah. talk about what's happening overseas. Yeah. These U.S. strikes tonight, do you think they will stop the Houthis from continuing to attack cargo ships, right? Attacking those cargo ships is forcing those cargo ships to make massive turns basically around an entire continent yep. to make their way around the world, which could definitely impact prices, worsen inflation, hit oil prices. If it were to be a, a severely protracted series of events, yes, this could be a problem for inflation. I don't necessarily think that's going to translate in the way some people fear. Yes, shipping costs have gone up rather dramatically as a result of this. If indeed that do activity does get tamped down and we start seeing ships go back through the Red Sea and out through the Gulf, and instead of going around the Horn of Africa, taking the more typical route that they usually uh, undertake, then we don't have to worry too much about that. What's been interesting about this entire process, if you can call it that, is that energy prices, crude oil is in the low $70 range, natural gas is around $2 per thousand cubic feet, and heating oil is even down, even though we've had a cold snap. So energy prices have not been affected by this. Shipping costs have been, but I don't think that's going to be in the long run a permanent problem for inflation. And of course, we are pumping more oil in the U.S. Than Nearly 13 and a half million barrels in per day. In the history of ever.